Okay, boys and girls, today is chapter three in Charlotte's Web, so you'll need the following material. Your book, of course, your packet, and a pen or pencil to write with. So if you haven't get, uh, if you don't have those materials right now, pause the video and gather what you need. All right, so before we begin chapter three in our book, let's take a look at the chapter three questions. So let's open up to the chapter three page and let's read what it says. E.B. White, who is the author, used descriptive language to describe the barn. Use words or phrases from the text to do the same. So we're going to listen to chapter three and listen to some of the words that the author used to describe the barn. Listen closely and there should be six different things that he says the barn either looks like, smells like, feels like, something along those lines. And then at the bottom here, we're going to read each statement and we're going to check off whether the statement is true or false. So let's look at them. Wilbur was happy to be at the Zuckerman's farm. True or false? Fern was able to go inside the pen with Wilbur. True or false? Wilbur's new friend was the goose. True or false? Wilbur was lured back into the pen with a pail of food. True or false? Now a pen is just an area where a pig lives. And if you can see right over here in our little barn picture, this is part of your homework for today. I'm sorry, part of your must do for today is to color this picture. You're gonna see that this looks like the pig pen. It's pretty muddy, okay? And when we talk about luring somebody, it's kind of like we're almost kind of tricking somebody to follow you. So to lure is to like use something to bring you to another place, okay? And to bring you someplace else. Let's look at some new vocabulary words before we begin chapter three. Here is the word stall. And as you can see, there's a picture of some animals here inside of a stall. It's a space in a barn where a single animal lives. And usually a stall is for like a big animal, like a cow or a horse. Then you're gonna come across this silly word. It's called hullabaloo. Hullabaloo, it means noisy excitement. So when people are cheering and screaming, something like that, it's hullabaloo. It's referred to that. The sheepfold is a shelter or a place for the sheep. So kind of like the pig pen is for the pig, the sheepfold is for the sheep. A cellar is a room that is partly or wholly underground. So kind of like a, like a basement. You have to go down below ground to get to that part of the the house or the barn in this case. And this word is pronounced trough. You're going to hear a lot about this trough in just a moment in the book. It, a trough is a long, narrow container that holds food for animals. And when we talk about the trough in Charlotte's web book, we are talking about the, the place where Wilbur eats. He eats out of a trough. Okay, all right, let's take a look at chapter three. Oops, I was on chapter four there. Let's get to chapter three. I know I'm getting there. There we go. Chapter three is titled Escape. The barn was very large. Ah, a word to describe the barn already. It was very old. It smelled of hay and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell, as though nothing bad could, ha could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of harness dressing and of axle grease and of rubber boots and of new rope. And whenever the cat was given a fish head to eat, the barn would smell of fish. But mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead, 
and there was always hay being pitched down to the cows and the horses and the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in winter, when the animals spent most of their time indoors, and it was pleasantly cool in the summer, when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the workhorses, tie-ups on the main floor for the cows, a sheep fold down below for the sheep, a pig pen down below for Wilbur, and it was full of all sorts of things that you find in barns. Ladders grindstones, pitchforks, monkey wrenches, scathes, lawn mowers, snow shovels, axe handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was the kind of barn that swallows like to build their nests in, and a swallow is a type of a bird. It was the kind of barn that children like to play in, and the whole thing was owned by Fern's uncle, Mr. Homer L. Zucker. Wilbur's new home in the lower part of the barn, directly underneath the cows, Mr. Zuckerman knew that a manure pile is a good place to keep a young pig. Pigs need warmth, and it was warm and comfortable down there in the barn cellar on the, on the south side. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded, and she placed the stool in the sheepfold next to Wilbur's pen. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoons, thinking and listening and watching Wilbur. The sheep soon got to know her and, tr and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep. All the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out, and he did not allow her to go into the pig pen. But he told Fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig, and it made Wilbur happy to know that she was sitting there, right outside his pig pen. But he never had any fun. No walks, no rides, no swims. One afternoon in June, when Wilbur was almost two months old, he wandered out into his small yard, outside the barn. Fern had not arrived for her usual visit. Wilbur stood in the sun, feeling lonely and bored. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. He walked slowly to his food trough and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the boards. When he when he tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile, and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of lying down. I'm less than two months old, and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to stay in that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it. Push, push, push on it and come on out. What? said Wilbur. Say it slower. At, 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 at the risk of repeating myself, said the goose. I suggest you come on out. It's a wonderful out here. Did you say a board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wilbur walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes, and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he squeezed through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. So the board they're talking about is this. One of these boards here, the long boards of wood, came loose. And so he pushed it, and he was able to get out of the yard. How does it feel to be free? she asked. I like it, said Wilbur. This is... I guess, that is, I guess, I like it. 
Actually, Wilbur felt queer to be outside his fence. That means he felt strange, with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you like, anywhere you like, said the goose. Go down through the orchard, root up the sod. Go down through the garden, dig up the radishes, root up everything, eat grass, look for corn, look for oats, run all over, skip and dance, jump in plants. Go down through the orchard and stroll in the woods. The world is a wonderful place when you're when you're young. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked all around, sniffed the smells of afternoon, and then set off walking down through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mrs. Zuckerman was first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen window, and she immediately shouted for the men. Homer! she cried. Pigs out! Larvy! Pigs out! Homer! Larvy! Pigs out! He's down there under the apple tree! Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. The goose heard the racket, and she too started hollering. Run, run, run down the hill. Make for the woods, the woods, she shouted to Wilbur. They'll never, never, never catch you in the woods. The cocker spaniel heard the commotion, and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Zuckerman heard, and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, that just means he works on the farm, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off and anyway he had never been down there in the woods and wasn't sure he would like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman, and drive him toward the barn. And take it easy, don't rush him. I'll go and get a bucket of slops. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals and the on the place. Whenever any creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. Then one of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. The lambs learned about it from their mothers. The horses, in their stalls in the barn, pricked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got free and was no longer penned up or tied fast. Wilbur didn't know what to do or which way to run. It seemed as though everybody was after him. If this is what it's like to be free, he thought, I believe I'd rather be penned up in my own yard. The cocker pan spaniel was sneaking up on him from one side. Lurvy, the hired man, was sneaking up for man on the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to heed, uh, head him off if he started from the garden, and now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him, carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur! Dodge about! Dodge about! cried the goose. Skip around! Run toward me! Slip in and out! In and out! In and out! Make for the woods! Twist and run! The copper spaniel sprang for Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed Miss and grabbed. Mrs. Zuckerman screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed Wilbur and Wil Wilbur and grabbed the cocker spaniel instead. Nicely done, nicely done! cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. And the cocker spaniel is what it is the uh, what the dog is. It's the cocker spaniel. Run down hill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. Ay, ay, ay. Boys and girls, I'm going to stop right here at cha on page 22. We're not that um, far off from ending chapter 3. I'm almost out of time for this video, so please watch part 2 of Charlotte's Web to finish off the rest of chapter 3 and chapter 3 questions.